Greetings and welcome to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. Um, kind of forgot where we left off. I remember we talked to a wannabe French dude. And that was pretty much it. Uh, our client, Maggie Birdie, who we helped in the first episode of the second game is once again being tried for murder in this episode, for whatever reason. I don't know if this is the third episode or the last episode. I think it's both. But it's def just, you know, the third episode at the moment. And we're trying to figure out who this mysterious man is that is impersonating me. That also attempt, you know, ended up poisoning the dude that died, and that somehow nobody saw. And that's pretty much all that we got. There's not really anything we can do or anywhere we can go. Oh yeah, that guy. So. I have to wonder, what is it about Maggie Birdie that you have? Maggie Birdie was a police woman when she needs to What? Uh, yes, but she had to quit for some, uh, reasons beyond her control. We oui, mean, oui. she must. She was the suspect in the murder investigation, no? Oh, you know about that? That is why I gave it to her la perfume for her appreciation. Happiness for perfume? We oui, blendy from beer grammar, like I have been given to you before. But she's been arrested again. Found guilty this time. This is true. Her nature armor of underactiveness must have been very strong. Just a minute, your perfume doesn't work. I'm not surprised she was a perfect uh, suspect. After something like that took place before my very eyes. Something like what? What's this guy talking about? I mean, he just said that he didn't see the problem happen, but then turned around and said that he did see what the happened. So he's already, you know, contradicting himself. He's already lying. Does this mean Maggie did have a motive? Got to ask this guy for more info. Stat. Mm. I really wish we didn't, but okay. When Maggie took the coffee over to the victim, did anything happen? We, oui, uh, I suppose you could say so. So what happened? No, it was uh, it was nothing. That Maggie says she didn't even know that guy, but she's still being in, uh, indicted for murder. The prosecution must have to come up with some kind of emotive. Oui, it is true. If there was anything at all between Maggie and the victim, it could be relevant. So please, tell us anything you know. Why are we asking him if he knows? Why don't we ask Maggie herself? Cyclox. No way. What are we gonna do, G? We'll just have to... What the... What's wrong? Magatama. Gone. Huh? I had it in my pocket, but it vanished into thin air. Uh-oh. Uh... Uh... I don't even remember seeing that, actually. Did it really vanish before we started talking to this guy? That's a problem. What? But I could see the Cyclops. Do that mean the Magatama's nearby? Nah, it just sounds like you just don't need it. Mr. Armstrong? Could I just confirm something with you again? The table where the victim was sitting. Was anyone else sitting there? Hmm, three dots? That is a question you'll have to ask yourself. Huh? Him? The old man spends a lot of his time just like para. A park? Oh, a park. What's... what park's that? 
Behind the restaurant, it is called Vietnam Square. Ah, thank you. Vietnam. I think he meant vitamin, but okay. Just for the period, my dear. Let's go check out this vitamin square right away, Z. Yeah, find some, might some, we might find some Vietnams there. Shut up, Maya. Vietnam is a place, not a person. Stupid. January 6th. Vitamin Square. Why are there so many pigeons? Frickin' flying rats piss me off. Do they really? Yes, they're annoying. They're everywhere. They're just like actual rats. They carry diseases. Oh. So this is Vitamin Square. Ah, good old Vietnam. Maya, shut up. Yeah, I see where they get the name from now. The fruits scream Vietnamese. What? I mean, vitamins. Hey, you. Hey, Z. That's the guy, right? Isn't that the old man Mr. Armstrong was talking about? That grouchy-looking grandpa? He's throwing seats out for the pigeons. Oh, so he's the reason why we have flying rats. Absolute ignoramus. Uh, he's not throwing seeds for them. He's throwing seeds at them. <laughs> uh, he hates them just as much as I do. Uh, uh, stop! Stop proving that this game has jiggle physics. It's disgusting. Ah, uh, three dots. Uh, my grumpiness threat level has just been raised to red. I don't like this guy at all. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, three dots. Do you mind if I had a word with you? Yes! I just want to ask you a couple questions. What's the matter with you? Can't you see I'm busy? Why? So you don't like my seeds, eh, pigeons? You're really chucking those seeds at them. It's gotta hurt. Well, I mean, they don't look like they're very small seeds, so... Maybe the pigeons don't like that because they can't swallow the seeds? You ever think of that? Go on! Eat this! Uh, why do we have, like, this weird... war... like... stomping into battle kind of music? I don't... I don't get that. Excuse me, sir, can I ask you about Maggie Birdie? I don't know any Maggie Birdie. Yes, you do. Maggie, the waitress had trays the end. Cah, yeah, it's a disgrace. Yeah, I tell you, another disgrace. A disgrace? A disgrace. Disgrace? An innocent young girl revealing herself like that. Re mm, really? Revealing? You mean her uniform? They use those today. They don't have any shame. No shame. I tell you. No. No. Not one ounce. I mean, how much are you getting paid is the question. Like, if you give anybody a high enough figure, they will absolutely throw their shame out the window. It will be non-existent. But whatever. Whatever happened to the old pseudo values of Japan? Uh, I mean, yeah, you do realize you're in a fictional world that thinks that it's in America, but it's actually in Japan because, you know, it was written by a Japanese person and was made into a manga before being made into an anime. Right. Anyways, he's correct. My God, in Odyssey. What about me? I'm not wearing anything revealing. You! Your problem is you lack any sense of grace. Talk about hitting a girl but it hurts. What? Her chesticles? Really, Z? I mean... I don't know. Uh, do you go to Tres Bien a lot? <laughs> that miserable excuse for a restaurant. That garbage they serve in there is not food. Where's the sushi? The tempura? The rice? Tres Bien is a French restaurant, sir. Where do you think we are, boy? In Paris? I want real food, not those snooty snacks. You know what? I mean, you got kind of a good argument there. 
depending on what country you live in, you shouldn't be forced to have to uh, eat some other country's food. But then again, you have to understand that you could go anywhere to eat food. So I don't understand why you would want to try Tres Bien, knowing it's a French restaurant, and getting pissed off that it's not serving sushi. That's not, you know, the French's expertise. You know, it's like trying to go to America and then asking for, uh, well, a bowl of rice. Rice is not our specialty. We have burgers and steak and uh, mashed potatoes. Maybe sometimes french fries, which is ironic because uh, there's no French person in the world that has ever made or eaten a french fry. Don't quote me on that. Anyways. What about those shameless girls? You mean the waitresses? You can see all the way up to the... the, the uh, yes, the waitresses! Hmm. Well, we know where his mind is traveling when he goes to a restaurant. They're practically naked, so it's a straight. Isn't it? Well, isn't it? Listen, it's not my restaurant. Yeah. Miserable excuse for a restaurant. That place. Miserable. Certainly knows the place. He must be a regular. Which is weird, because he's complaining about it. Is he just... One of those people that likes to complain just for the sake of complaining? Hmm. That's kind of douchey. If he hates it so much, why does he keep going? Are you a regular at that restaurant, sir? Yeah, three dots. It's just, if you just like it so much, why do you keep going there? Three dots. Sir? There you are, you filthy pigeons! You want food? <laughs> Take that. What? Why do you throw the food at the pigeons? Like, why do you hate the pigeons so much? What is with this guy? He must be hiding something, right? If he is, I should be able to see a cyclock or two. Oh, wait. I don't exactly have the Magatama right now. Huh. Remember, see? The Magatama is only on loan. You better find it or else. If Earl's ever gets wind of this, I'm going to be in a world of pain. Well, that's weird. Um... Is there anything that we can present to him? Uh, excuse me, sir, could I just ask you about this? That's a no. What about Maggie Birdie? No. Weird. Okay. Um... Well, then. Huh. Well, I, uh, don't know what to do. I mean, was there anything that I could have looked at? Oh, there's a magazine here. It's a magazine full of job listings. You disgusting rogue, picking up something someone else threw away. Threw away? Did you throw this away? Are you looking for a job? <laughs> That's none of your business. Sorry, I guess I'll just take the magazine with me then. I don't want anyone else having it. Give it back. Too bad. Now that you want it so bad, I don't want to give it up up from a bench in Vitamin Square, thrown away by the old man. Interesting. Hey, that's mine. Well, not anymore. Uh, wait, he doesn't want to say anything about it? Uh, okay. Well, that's weird. Uh, I, I... Fine, okay, bye. Douche. Mademoiselle! Yes? Aren't you looking for a job? 
What? Uh, no, no, I, I was just... Let me see. Your style is different from what you had with good face. What? Different? Felicitations, we have passed. I will hire you. Bien, come with me. I will teach you everything I know. See? Help! I don't know whether I laugh or feel bad for mine. I think I'd rather just laugh. Maybe I should do both. Um. Okay. Um. Well. I think at that point I'm good. Because now I don't have Maya or Pearl. And I'm just working by myself. Ah. My dream job. Not dealing with children. Perfect. January 6th Detention Center Visitors Room. Looks like they have Maggie in question. Guess I've asked her pretty much everything. And I'll come back if there's anything else I need to ask her later. Cool. Great. Nothing to do. January 6th Police Station. Criminal Affair. Well, pal, have you found the evidence yet? Say, the one that's gonna find her innocent, yeah? Uh, no, not yet. We've only just started our investigation. Well, whatever you need to know, I'll give you the dirt on it. Yeah, say, I'm putting all of my other cases off for now. Putting off all my other cases for now, pal. Mm, okay. Whatever, Gumshoe. He's really fired up about this. Oh, yeah, one more thing, say. The retrial has been approved. Court sitting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And God, it's gonna be the prosecutor, yeah. No. Oh. Three dots. Him. Yeah, that's enough, pal. If Maggie's found guilty again. Yes. Oh, well, I, uh, I'll make sure you get locked up for good, you got it? Ouch. Okay. Uh, that's not necessary, but whatever. So, the guilty party was Maggie Birdie, huh? Yeah. Back when she was on the police force. You were her mentor when she was a rookie, right? Yeah, I kept a close eye on her. I mean, uh, not too close, you know. Say, yeah, say, yeah, yeah, say. Not, not what you think I am, yeah. Uh, okay. Three dots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twelve dots, say. Yeah, what's with the funny look, pal? Fifteen dots, say. What? I was just a... I, I wasn't anything like that. Look, sure, I was her boss when she was doing training. But that was it. Nothing happened. Okay, you can calm down now. Come shoot sure is sweating up a storm over nothing. Ah, so that's it. Big ol' Gumshoe has a little crush on Maggie. I mean, we kind of figured that out last time. In the last game. But we kind of glossed over it simply because it was irrelevant to the case. It was more or less just to poke fun at him. Now they're just kind of throwing it in our face for no reason, because reasons. Right. I don't like her in attack. Guy. I was... Yeah. Note to self. Gossip with Maya about this later. Look, pal, don't tell anyone, okay? But I already made a mental note to tell someone. No. Well, that's not good, see? You gotta keep it a secret, got it? Sure. Uh, wait, you want me to keep it a secret to got it? You know, the, the prosecutor? No, I, I mean... I hate you. Okay. And would you mind not guessing what I'm thinking all the time? Hey, tell your face, pal, not me. You have to be blind not to see what's on your mind. Yeah. What? Well, okay. So, I was wondering. Can you fill me in on the victim? Glenn Elg. Elg? Glenn Elg? Weird. Okay, what's going You're a programmer. I see. Programmer. He was just a regular Joe working for a small time computer firm. Maggie never had any contact with the guy before that day, see? And all she did was take him his coffee on the day of the murder, pal. Yeah, Maggie also claimed to have never seen the guy before. Did the victim go to the restaurant often? 
not according to the chef. Said it was the first time he'd seen a gun. Programmer, and a first time customer, at that. What possible reason could Maggie have had to kill a guy like that? That's what I thought, see. But a motive was still somehow established in her trial. Kitty, what was her supposed motive? Sorry, pal. I'm real busy. I haven't got even enough time to stiff through or sift through. Stiff sift through or stiff sift. Sifting. What? These papers. Look into it yourself, okay? What could this motive have been? Wait, did he give me the papers? No, he didn't, so what the frick? This isn't really a proper investigation. I'm kind of working on it by myself, see? Oh, that's right. Santa already rolled on the case, and all the evidence is in, in already. The only problem is with Maggie's testimony. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't sound very good for us, huh? Look, pal. I've got a mountain of papers on this case I'll look over before tomorrow, see? So I'm just gonna say this. Maggie Birdie's no liar. Yeah. She's... She's... She's a girl. That... What? Okay, she's a bit out there. A bit of a beast sometimes. But she was a good cop. Yeah. That's not exactly complimentary, you know? So, what do you think really happened? And just how contradictory is her testimony? The biggest problem with Maggie's testimony is the number of people at the table. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Maggie still insists there was another guy sitting with the victim. Right. But get this. Everyone else in the place says the guy was alone. Even the chef. And then there's that CD, see? CD? Oh yeah, she did mention something about a CD. And there was a simple CD on the table, sir. But our guys turned that place upside down. There was no CD. What? Not on the table. Not anywhere in the whole restaurant, pal. But didn't Maggie say the victim was wearing an earpiece too? Yeah, but that was for the portable radio in the front pocket of his hoodie. Radio? He didn't have a CD player? You got it. Your phony never explained that contradiction at all. Hmm. Come to think of it, the owner of Today's Bien didn't mention that CD either. I don't know why, but I get the feeling Mr. Armstrong's got something to hide. Um. You have anything to say about Mr. Armstrong? The chef of Tres Bidian, huh? You know what that chef said to me? Ooh la la, your body is full of the toxins. And then he gave me this bottle. What's in it? More toxins. What? I don't know. The label says juniper. Yeah. I don't like that at all. And then I'm on order to put a few drops of it in my bath every day. You're under orders? Wait, do you not use soap when you shower? Bro, that's disturbing. Under orders? Yeah, you know, there's something about that lady. I mean, God. Uh. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. That's, uh, hmm. That's all I have to say about that is, mm. Huh? Can't stop thinking about him. Not like that, pal. Give me a break. He's not my type. Haha, ah, real funny. We're making fun of his sexuality. So cool. I mean, I can't stop thinking that he's involved with this case somehow. Yeah. Sounds like he knows a little something more about our charming chef. Okay. Um... What's that? A sports paper. Yeah, I found it in the magazine rack at Tres Bien. It's dated the same day as the murder. May not be under something here. Not really. Take a look at this. See this writing here? MC Bomber. Yeah, MC Hammer Pants. Hey.
What is it? But I've heard that name somewhere before. Yeah. MC Bomber. MC Hammerpants. Wow. He actually seems to be thinking for once. Yeah. It's no good. I can't remember. I can't remember what. And he goes back to being the gumshoe we all know and love. Hey, pal. I'm gonna borrow this paper for a bit, okay? I wanna see a hand-running analysis done on this scribble. Alrighty, huh? Uh, it'd be good to know more about that in any case. Thanks, pal. I bet this will turn out to be an interesting clue. Board paper given to Detective Gumshoe. Hooray! Uh, excuse me. So what exactly is it that caught your attention about the chef at Tres Bien? The fact that he's pink, and that he has curls. And curls. Over his curls. And that his goatee has a curl. Uh, what? Nah. He's also got sleeveless shirts. And his biceps are massive. But his forearms are just tiny. What? That's, uh, kinda hard to say. You guys probably not even connected with the case anyway. Yeah, come on, detective. Didn't you say you'd give me the dirt on anything? Well, the sort of stuff is kinda... unimportant. Gossip. Stuff, you know, pal. Yeah. Yeah, look. How about this, say? You gotta trace BN and investigate the place yourself. And if you find any out anything suspicious about that guy, you report back to me, okay? Uh, don't suppose I get a choice in this, huh? Guess I'd rather find out more about the chef and trace BN than report back to Gumshoe. But... We basically have... Uh... What? Why? Yeah, whatever. I guess just go back, I guess. It's kind of messed up that they're making me... January 6th right in Cole office? Oh my. Looks like Mr. Armstrong's really taking a shine to her. I suppose I just have to let her work at the restaurant for a while. I'm gonna pick her up from 3 p.m. once things have cooled off. What do we have to go there now? Because apparently something new has happened. I, I don't know. January 6th, today's BN. Scent of flower sure is strong. It's almost making me dizzy. Whoa! Ah. It's a... It's a goth nun. Uh, hello, goth nun. And she's gone. Who was that just now? Customer. She has sort of a dark aura about her. Yeah, it's called goth. Phoenix, you're stupid. Yeah, welcome. Buen of you. Wow, what a cute voice. Oh, it's Maya. Where? Oh, it's just Susie. Hey, Maya, why do you sound like a dude? Uh, that's kind of not my problem. Also, shut up. Maya. Well, how do I look? You look like garbage. Hot, smelly skunk garbage. Well, that's rude. Three dots. Maybe you should quit being a spirit medium. Maybe, but it's kind of boring being a waitress. I mean, you're my first ever customer. Wait. If it's boring being a waitress, and I'm the first customer, that in turn means that I'm the one who's boring you. Which, you know, that's not how this works. You're just supposed to be a waitress. You're supposed to cater to my every whim, more or less. Therefore, uh, you can shut it. Calling me boring. <laughs> then who was that woman I just saw? Oh, oh! Since you're here, you might as well have something to eat. Uh, three dots? I am kinda hungry, actually. Um... Weird. So, how do you like your new job, Maya? I knew there was so much for a waitress to do. Yeah. And they get very underpaid, but whatever. Take people's orders, never get paid, bring them their food, don't really get tips, make coffee, get yelled at a lot, work the cashier, have to sit there and smile even though when I'm angry. Of course, we need a customer before I can do any of that. Yeah, except when they're 
really bossy and immature. Kinda like some spiky haired blue suited idiot that just walked in. What? What? Yeah, it's a nice looking restaurant. It's a shame more people don't come. Oh, that's kinda disgusting actually. I really wouldn't want them to do that. What? Uh, no, my. Not that kind of. Mm. Really want to slap you now. Don't forget about the ultra cute waitress. Check out my give me a tip smile. Uh, I don't think any waiter or waitress has that kind of a smile, and if they do, uh, <laughs> it doesn't work. Not on me, anyways. Hey, see, what are you talking about? Nothing. Why don't you order something? Chef's preparing a tasty lunch of set at the moment, or so he says. How much is it? It's, uh, 150 bucks. Really? For lunch? I mean, it's technically 20, but the other 130 is to pay me. Nice try, Maya. It's the twin tea set, so it's $20, of course. Twin tea set? I believe I'll be taking a pass on that. It's kind of expensive. Really, Phoenix? $20? Come on. There's so many people, so many places that I go to where I can blow $20 no problem and still be perfectly fine. You're full of garbage. What? You can't? Come on, see, it's not very every day I get to be a waitress. Yeah, and $20 in this particular place, which is, you know, just kind of like a hole-in-the-wall restaurant sort of thing going on here where there's only two people working at any given time. $20 is extremely cheap. There are places like these that will make you pay upwards to $50 for lunch. Just because, you know, they don't really have a sense of competitiveness towards the uh, the corporate agenda or the, the corporate espionage that is the restaurant business. They just want to make money to make money, so yeah. It's frickin' twenty dollars, Phoenix. Just give it up. Uh. I want to try uh, carrying plates and working the cash register. Uh, how about cleaning the toilets? That should keep you busy. Yeah, right. Maybe later. Uh, about the lunch. No, oh, a fine choice, sir. No. Uh. Kitchen! A lunch special, please! With all the extras! Drink, salad, side salad, dessert, and gift! I don't need any of that. Just a moment, please, sir. I was really getting to this. So, how much is the set lunch then? $20? Both the drink, side salad, and dessert. It's $45? Oh. That's messed up. Okay, that is what I expected for a hole-in-the-wall restaurant. Yeah, that lunch is definitely 45 bucks. But, I mean, that's kind of on Maya, because, you know, she decided to do all the fixings rather than just give the lunch, which would have came with a complimentary drink and just whatever the twin tea set is anyways. So, yeah, the extra... $25 has to do with the salad and the dessert. Probably, definitely the dessert. Whatever the frick it is. Hey, wait a second. Maya! Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Here you are. A deluxe fortified lunch set. I thought it was twin tea. Also, what is that? Is that a crawfish? Ew. Whoa. Addition started by lobster and... Uh, Alabalon Francesca with a Balismic Vinaigrette. I don't know what any of those words mean. I've never seen them before on a lunch menu, you know, in my entire life. Well, except maybe the lobster. What in the frick of frack? That's definitely not a lobster. That's too small to be a lobster. Bon appetit. Um, thanks? Come on, see? Hurry up and try it already. 
Well, stop standing there and let, you know, staring at me because you can't make me eat while you're staring me down. It's disturbing. It's unsettling. It's downright disgusting. Lobster, huh? Wait, lobster for lunch? Ew. Lobster's a dinner meal. You're insane to have that for lunch. I mean, I have a bowl of cereal for breakfast. You know, well not for, for breakfast. I have a bowl of cereal for dinner sometimes. And that's nowhere near insane as putting lobster for lunch. Like, just no. Lobster is a dinner meal. Deal with it. Alright, down the hatch goes. Three dots. Well? Are you hungry, Maya? I'm starving. Here, it's yours. Well, apparently he doesn't like it. Uh, I mean, it doesn't look like it was well cooked. And uh, if you don't cook lobster well, like, you know, if you either undercook it or overcook it, it it's bad. Like, you, just, you just screwed up at that point. Just wasted $30 on a tail. And that, that's not exaggerating. Tails are really expensive nowadays. Ugh. Really? They're expensive. Ugh. Remember, Maya. My wallet doesn't print money. So you'd better polish off that plate. Uh, three dots. I just remembered I've got to clean the toilets. Hey. Can't be in that much of a hurry to clean the toilets. Today's BN Lunch Special added to the court record. Lunch Special. Today's BN Lunch Special. Cost $20 despite how unbelievably bad it tastes. Well, I mean, $20 is more or less the average slash, you know, below average for meals. And with that being said, you get what you pay for. So, if you, you know, if someone has lobster for $20, no. Nah. I would not trust that one bit. Mostly because of the fact that, you know, I just don't trust anybody else to cook lobster properly. On top of the fact that if you don't specialize in making lobster and you, you know, sell it for 20 bucks, knowing that it costs $30 just to get the tail itself, yeah, I, uh, something's not right. There's just a bunch of red flags going off. I mean, it's, no. No. Anyways. Ah. Uh, sounds like I managed to make good food taste so bad. Hey Z, you wanna take a peek at the kitchen? Kitchen, huh? Not a bad idea. Hmm. Now, what was it that Maggie said again? In the kitchen, you'll get to see all of the chef's greatest secrets? I don't remember her saying that, actually. In the kitchen? Hmm. That sounds tasty. That actually sounds disturbing. You know, depending on how you look at that. See, get your mind out of the gutter. Shut up, Maya. Okay. Hey, wait up, Maya. What is it? Pretty busy right now. Were you going to show me around? <laughs> okay. Here goes my plan to find some cool clue and show it off to you in my face. What? I better conduct a search in the kitchen myself. Oops, frick. Moving. What? In the frick of frack is this? First off, why do you have drapes in the kitchen? Especially over the stove where the heat is conducted and can burn the fabric. All in Why, in general? You know, there's a lot of liquid flying around. There's a lot of things that can stain the drapes, that can get ca you know caught on the drapes, and if you're not cleaning the drapes every day, you know, throwing them in the wash or, you know, hand-washing them yourself, they're going to get moldy, and that's definitely not something that you want in a kitchen. That will absolutely get you shut down. So, uh, yeah. This dude dumb. 
January 6th, Tresbian Kitchen. And here it is, the famous Tresbian Kitchen. It's my first time in here, too, actually. Wait, it's your first time in the kitchen? I mean, you may be a waitress, but there's plenty of waiters and waitresses that go into the kitchen, either to get plates or to get a specific tool or maybe even to get specific lunch set up or a meal, whatever. Especially when uh, the break room is usually in the back, which you have to cut through the kitchen to get to. So, how is it your first time in the kitchen? Granted, you know, you're not technically supposed to be working here, Maya, but still. You are now the waitress. You're the one that's handling the food. You have to go to the kitchen at some point to be able to get the food from the chef. Unless there's a window. But even then, you should still be able to see into the kitchen. Girl, you are just dumb. You are beyond stupid. Three dots. There's a weird atmosphere in here, that's for sure. Mr. Armstrong will be back soon, so we'd better search quickly. Chop chop. Uh, okay. Um, well, I see where all the bottles are. So this looks like a treasure chest or something. Wow, look at all these little bottles. Oh, they're aromatherapy oils. It's got so many. Wait. Aromatherapy oils don't work in a bath. Why does Gumshoe think he needs to put them in his bath water? Well, whatever. Got so many, they're overflowing onto the floor. I mean... Maybe? I see. 1, 2, 10, 12, 38, 16, 91, 1000. They're all the same, too. Maya. You know better. What? Hey, I never went to grade school. Oh yeah, that's right. You were in Kieran Channeling Technique, where there is no school. Wow, you really are dumb. Shut up. Hey, wait a minute. What is it? There's one bottle that's different from all the others. Hmm. It looks like green nail polish. Don't ask me how I know that it looks like a green nail polish uh, bottle. Well, what do you know? The narrator has a secret. Huh? What? Uh, and it doesn't have a label either. And it doesn't smell. I mean, hmm. Weird. So what's that liquid inside then, I wonder? Don't taste it. If you can't smell it, it's probably nothing good. I mean, it could just be water. If it doesn't have a scent, it's probably just water. But, uh, yeah, you don't know what that could hold. That That's a stranger's uh, item. That That's a stranger's bottle. That could probably hold the deadliest poison in all the world. So, no, just don't. Put it down. Get, get a plastic bag. Wrap it in the plastic bag, then get another plastic bag, and wrap that plastic bag within the plastic bag. And then get a wooden box, and then get a metal box to put the wooden box in. After putting all the plastic bags inside the box. Because, uh, you don't want to touch that. Hey Z, the narrator's rambling. Yeah, he does that. Seems you do that a lot. We should borrow this. We should borrow this. Hey, don't steal my lines. Well, I mean, you weren't talking. Well, shut up, and maybe I will. I mean, look how many bottles he's got. He won't miss one, will he? Well, I mean, that's the specific one that's different from all the others. I would assume that he would easily be able to miss that one, knowing that it's different from all the others. But at the same time, it's different from all the others. We need it. Oh, I, also, I just realized we have the Magatama on the table. What the heck? That's weird. Found the kitchen. Shape is different from the other bottles. Contents unknown. Weird. Look. Now this is one large mirror. I bet this is where he makes himself look pretty. I would hope not. He, it is the kitchen. 
nothing but food, silverware, and ingredients, and maybe a few other things, maybe soap, depending, you know, if there's a sink nearby, should be ever allowed in the kitchen. There's no reason to be putting makeup or, you know, body oils, you know, personal items in the kitchen. It's just, that's just no. Anyways, there's a book on the dresser. Lore of the Endowment. Link in the description below. Phoenix, that's not what it says. Oh, uh, Clarence Armstrong's Bedtime Literature? I don't think we want to read that. Not exactly. Pulitzer Prize material. Pulitzer. Is it? Shut up, Maya. Looks like a collection of poems he's written. Uh, I mean, that sounds better than what I was thinking it was going to be, but I still wouldn't. Just don't, don't read it. Poems? Cool. Read one out. And say it's in your best French accent. With intensity, okay? Okay. Here's one. <clears throat> it's called Patemps. The truth of them that I can ask us from a field for the coffee that turned the right. The adjusting that I want to lose soon, but that that's another thing morning. The fruit cocktail is so delicious. Take this to death, let's see if your tea and I don't what you'll do. Tell me slight to you, I must. My gosh, that was the worst accent ever. You also messed up a lot of words. I mean... You didn't say I had to really make it good. You just said I had to try. You just, I just had to give it a lot of oomph. And I did. Almost sounded a little bit more German, actually. That's disgusting. Huh? That's it? Yep. That's a poem for you. I mean... Not all poems really have a lot to say. In fact, actually, I, I wouldn't even consider that a poem in general. Because uh, it made absolutely no sense. Oh, the Magatama. Just ignore that. Actually, uh, it looks like I can't ignore it because there's nothing else to really click on. Now I know I'm in a French restaurant. I've never heard of most of these seasonings. Hey, Z, this container has oyster sauce. What's that? Oyster? Or Worcester? Isn't that used in Chinese food? Well, oyster sauce, yeah. Worcester is used in British stuff. Also, uh, just because it's a French restaurant, quote, French, doesn't mean it has all the unknown ingredients of the world. It's like, that's... I wouldn't really, you know... I don't mean to offend anybody, but I don't think the French are the most well-renowned for cuisine. And even still, like, why at any point would you assume that just because there's a bunch of spices that you would assume that it's a genuine French restaurant. I don't even think the French use that many spices. That's more of a, an Italian thing. So, you're stupid, Maya. You're getting your countries mixed up. And also, you're racist for getting your countries mixed up. Ugh. Isn't that using Chinese food? Ah, look! What? Ah, look! Right there on the counter. My Magatama. No, it's my Magatama. But you already have a Magatama. Oh. Ah, oh. and you know what? That's a little awkward. My Magatama! What's it doing here? Oh, indeed. Magatama put into pocket. On loan from my recovered in the kitchen of Tres Bien. But why? How? I'm totally confused on what happened. I don't get it. Like, 
Huh. Is there anything else? No, I'm just gonna say the same thing again. Yeah, 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 yeah. And look at these knives! They look really sharp! I like to see how one of the, those slices threw a cheesecake. Why are you specifically a cheesecake? A cheesecake? You don't exactly need a sharp knife for one of those, see? Nope, no you don't. But okay. Is there anything in the pot? Mm, that smells good. Something's bubbling away nicely in that pot. It must be the lobster and abalone for Sasuke with a basement vinaigrette. Isn't that what I just ate for lunch? Maybe. What you ate is the only French dish I know the name of. Hmm. So, you've basically been forcing people to buy $45 lunches? Which makes you a bad waitress. Hmm. Can't believe the dude hasn't, uh properly train you for this job. But, I mean... There's not really anything else to do. Hmm. Um... Hmm. Where else to go? Detention Center. Well, we already came from the Criminal Affairs. January 6th, police station, criminal affairs. Okay, you're just in time, say. What is it, Detective Gumshoe? The lab got back to me about that newspaper you gave me. It must mean the sports paper with the memo scribbled on it. So, what did they say? Did the analysis turn up anything? They said that doodle was written by the victim, Glenn L. No doubt about it, say. I expected as much. The victim took the paper with him to the restaurant on the day of the murder, see? That's our best in, uh, interpretation of the facts at the moment, yeah. Really? Left by the victim, Doodle is in victim's paw writing. Wait, if it was left by him... Hmm. Wait, it's his first time there. He puts the sports paper jammed into the the magazine rack. I don't know for who or for why. But wait, how does he do that, though? Because he goes in. It's his first time there. He goes in. He would have to turn to the magazine rack, put the paper next to the magazine rack, and then go to the table where he gets killed. But that doesn't make any sense. Who does he expect to pick up that paper? Whatever. MC Bomber. I get the feeling I've heard that name somewhere before, see? Yeah, MC Hammer Pants. Now well, you guys all come back to me. Don't forget to report to me or back to me when you find something in the restaurant, okay, pal? Since when did I start taking orders from Gumshoe? Although, I get the feeling there's something I need to show him. Yeah. This thing. You got one of those aroma bottles too, huh? Only this one doesn't smell. Huh. I don't get you. This was mixed in with all the other aromatherapy bottles, but it's not the same. It doesn't even look the same. Wouldn't you agree? A cologne bottle. It doesn't smell, huh? It smells like a skunk to me, pal. That... That would imply it has a scent, and it doesn't. Gumshoe. Mind let me borrow that bottle for a while? I want to send it to the lab for analysis, so... The victim was poisoned, so the contents of this bottle are pretty important. Small bottle given to Dex Wigumption. I had a hunch there was something funny about that chef. You suspect Gene Armstrong? I've got that guy's number. I know what his secret is. Um, you might want to rephrase those? That must be the same secret Gumshu was talking about before. Guess I better fill you in on the details, say. About this Armstrong guy's secret, I mean. Oh? Um... Tell me. So what's Mr. Armstrong's secret? You ever had lunch at Trace Bien, pal? Uh, yes. 
So, how was it? To put it nicely, it was inedible. Okay, don't worry about being nice around me, pal. You and I both know the reason that place is so empty is because of the food. Yeah. Yeah, you can't really have a restaurant that doesn't sell good food. Like, you know, the whole point of being a restaurant is to have food for people to eat, and if they're not eating it, then... Yeah, I, you kind of screwed up. I mean, the place is clean. It's got a girl like Maggie as a waitress, so... Yeah, I guess that's probably the food. The real scoop on the guy is he's up to his ears in debt. I wouldn't... I wouldn't put it past it. I mean, the dude decked out the entire place in pink. And, uh... Only has him and one other person working. I would assume that, yeah, he's probably in a bad shape for money. Really? How much does he owe? Just a copy of his loan contract. He's about half a million in red. Wow. 500? Wait a minute. Hang on. Hmm. Something about this is suspicious. So if he's half a million in debt... Maybe this was a plan to get him to only need to pay a hundred thousand? And then they would cover the debt? But that would mean that he is indebted to somebody else who paid off the debt. And it, that sounds like a mafia kind of thing going on. Hmm. That's not good. Half a million? Are we talking dollars? No, we're talking yen, because it's Japan, see? Wait, half a million in yen is, like, 500 or $5,000, that's not much. Yeah, hey, if it was sterling, he'd really be in trouble. Sorry, that figure just took me by surprise. Yeah, this case is full of surprises, yeah, see? And I'd be willing to bet that Seth's got something to do with most of them. That's my hunch. I don't really want to know any more surprises about some dude who wears pink and has curls on his beard. That, that doesn't sound right. Gene's loan contract. Debt is half a million dollars. The owner of the loan is Tender Lender. Who the heck is Tender Lender? Present. It's for half a million dollars, pal. That's, um, half a million dollar bills. What was the omen um there for? Is there really that much money tied up in this case? I can't give you an answer on that, pal. Not without that case file in front of me, see? But I'll tell you this. That Armstrong guy would have done anything for cash. He was desperate, you know? Ugh. Not, not that kind of desperate. Get your mind out of the gutter, see? No, I don't, but I think I sort of get the picture. I don't think you do, so... Yeah... Um... Well... That's quite a bit that we've done. Um... Is there anywhere else we can go, though? Tension center, nope. Um, there's not really anything else to do. Kitchen? Nope. Um, what about the old? January 6th, Vitamin Square. Oh. Um, we're gonna have to put a pause on this. Also, that thing is really beat up. So with that being said, that'll be the end of uh, today's session. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Stay safe. Take care. We'll see you in the next session.